The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Do you ever feel like, um, like when you're sitting here and you had a long day and he's talking to you, do you ever feel like, Jason, shut the fuck up, you're talking too much? No. Really? No, because I think we have enough time, like, between the time that he gets home and the time that I usually get home. It only, he just came in because I I just picked you up, so I'm usually here for, like, an hour before he walks in the oh, door. Oh, right. I mean, I don't think that either, but I just feel, I feel like you would. <laughs> Sometimes if I'm like in a mood, I'll just remove myself from said situation. I'll just like go sit upstairs and Jason knows what that's like. (laughs) Hi guys. Welcome to Esoteric Oddities. Hi guys. I'm Jonathan. I'm Sarah. And my boyfriend Jason just came home and (laughs) said he was going to buy me flowers, but he bought the cat a toy instead. And And I said, that's what it's going to be like when you have kids. I'm okay with that. Whoa. What was that? That, ma'am. I like, I'm tone deaf. This is a fun podcast, but it's not that fun but buying somebody flowers is like buying them like a responsibility and you've seen what happened to the plants upstairs i I buy my girlfriend flowers all the time i know but it's just like here i bought you flowers keep them alive which is weird because she really holds the masculine role and i'm just like here's flowers babe you're so pretty (laughs) flowers no no gender but You're right. So my house, as we have told you guys all before, is deaf haunted. And for some reason, any plant. Okay, let's talk about when I stayed over here and I was fucking shook. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to bring that up in a second. But we should do a whole, maybe not record it at my house. But I, yeah, no. I made a video last October about all the shit that's happened in my house. And the video was like, I think, 20 minutes long. So we could definitely with updates do like a full hour podcast of the weird shit that's occurred in these four walls just renewed my lease too by the way ooh, ooh, so look forward to more another creepy year stories. of that creepy shit you should keep your camera on down here all night and see what the fuck no thanks find. with those marionettes staring at us y'all are looking handsome today i'm pretty sure that one fell over yeah. or it moved you just have to like be nice to them because they listen to everything we say i i, I know um that. but back to what i was gonna say is all the plants i bring into my house like i hey, don't guys, have an issue remember that fucking pumpkin <clears throat> Yes, that's part of a story that I can tell you guys, but like any plant that I bring into my house dies almost instantly. And it's not like, I mean, I don't have a green thumb or anything, but like I know how to keep a plant you alive. You do, you know how to keep, yeah, because take care of plants. I have two cacti up there that I had when I lived with Sarah in 2014, and by 2014, they were already 2 years old. So do you think that your and cat now they're dying. Them? Like, no, because she can't get up there. She can't get up there, and it doesn't matter what shelf. Like I have a, but it's, it's that back. It doesn't matter. Corner. It's either that back corner. I'll put it into my bedroom. I put it by the window. The ones that aren't supposed to be in direct sunlight are not in direct sunlight, and like every single plant dies within like a week. Isn't there like a like an omen of that? Even my aloe plant, yeah. even my my cacti, my succulents, get all out. of them are like D E A D dead. O D E D dead. D E D get out honestly what is that noise it's the fucking turtle oh also what is that room oh god no it's the cat moving the chair around upstairs i cannot work with this fucking sounds what's going on okay speaking of sounds uh i slept over at jonathan's house last friday and he moved um the bed in his room with for me because um it was too hot upstairs in the guest room yeah i have a guest room on the third floor my bedroom is on the second floor we have window units so it was air conditioned and it was so hot heat rises if you didn't know fucking google it um and sarah i was gonna put her up in the guest bedroom but it was so blazing up there (laughs) so and somehow in my drunken stupor i brought the whole mattress down So it was like 2 a.m. and I wake up and I hear like thumping. I hear whistling and I'm like, maybe his brother's home. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go with that. But my heart was still racing. I'm fucking sweating because I'm so scared. (laughs) (laughs) Like this is, I know you guys are going to probably call me a fucking fraud because I do this podcast and I'm over here like a scared little bitch. Yeah, but it's one thing to do a podcast when, you know, you're with somebody and you're awake. And like it's another thing when you're asleep at night pretty much by yourself. 
and then it's like I had to keep the door cracked open for Buffy and I was like I don't want the door open like I'm so scared something's gonna pop out at me so I had to put the covers over my head but that was making me really hot and I was sweating more <laughs> <laughs> and then so I saw your brother the next day and I was like did you come home last night and he was like yeah so I was like okay that explains the thump and I was like other things what else happened and I was like were you whistling and he was like no and I was like oh shit oh shit it was Casper again scary shit yeah, it is kind of creepy in this bitch. It is pretty creepy in this bitch. And then that was Friday. We spent the whole weekend together and then... S- we really did. The whole weekend. I love Saturday. us. Saturday. Saturday we hung out here. And we then went we for went... for breakfast and then hung out here. Yeah. And then we went to... <laughs> we went to the club. Oh we didn't God, get there like, until like maybe 12. 12.30. We pull up. There's ambulances outside and there's cops everywhere. And we're like, what's happening? Shit show. We had to take... Um, like an uber xl because there were so many of us a fucking van yeah um and we get in still don't know what happened but let me tell you guys that was the first time since i was since i've been to a club i think that was the very first time i went to a club sober at one o'clock and i didn't drink the whole night and watching you know by the time it's like two o'clock and the club's about to close down and you're just dancing and having a good time and your jam comes on with you and your girls and you're like holy shit we're so hot we look great we're feeling great you pay attention to like only your small group and maybe a hottie in the corner watching that as a sober person is not fun was so it was fun until that girl spilled a drink on me but like it was life-changing i was like these people i saw this one girl who's tripping on something yeah don't know what was going i would on. not like to be tripping on anything while out at like a club i would die she was on something she, she was, was by herself one. i mean she was enjoying her damn self and, and she like should. she didn't she was probably like none of my friends want to come out with me i'm just gonna do my own thing um so that was fun and then the next day was pride was the pride parade in philly so we go out we miss pride we're drunk by 10 we did miss in the pride. morning take the subway i think we just got the subway and kiko like wedged her body in between the doors so it wouldn't close so you could get through oh my god because i was like they're not gonna make it i'm a not gonna pull my friend. pass out right yeah. and I, and then i was like oh my god they're making it i need to move <laughs> <laughs> so we get we we figure out that you know we didn't make, quite make the parade and then we took the sub again to go to a diner oh weird bathroom experience sarah <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, where do I start? <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so I had an edible I shouldn't have and I was tweaking in this restaurant. <laughs> it was a diner. Oh, well, whatever. And um so I'm arguing with Jonathan back and forth that I don't want to go in the bathroom because there are people in there. And he's like, well, "You no no no, not only that, you pulled me out of the men's bathroom." I did. I was like, "Don't go yet." <laughs> I was, I was already tw- gone. I was tweaking. I was in the bathroom. I feel and like sh- I felt like that was going to happen. I knew it. It was like something told me, like, just stay clear of that weird ass bathroom. And you didn't listen to your gut. So I go in there. I peek my head and I don't see anybody. So I go to enter the first stall. <laughs> enter. You heard me? Yeah. Um, so I go to go in the first stall and this fucking woman pops up and she's like, oh my God, you busted in on me. And I'm like, I am so sorry. Like just thinking. <laughs> and she continues to talk to me <laughs> and call me an intruder while I'm going to the bathroom. And I'm just like, ma'am, please shut the fuck up. I don't want to talk to you. I promise I'm not this rude, but it was just like not a good time. Yeah, because you were I was like, just trying to tweak in peace and that bathroom already smelled like shit. <laughs> oh, and I was also tweaking out about that because I was like, I can't go in there. It smells so bad. So this girl is talking to me. She's saying weird things like, you're an intruder. You, you busted <laughs> in on me. She was like, I'm just taking my break. Meanwhile, this girl is high off something. And she works there. She works there. She's high. She's like... Um, step into my office like just making weird ass <laughs> comments like that and i'm like please stop talking so i'm step sitting into my office. <laughs> so i'm sitting in the bathroom and this other woman comes in and she's with two um two girls like little people <laughs> so Th- they were children yes <laughs> you know <laughs> what <laughs> anyway so she was with two children and she's like the girl that I busted in on was like, oh, my God, are these your kids? And li- and the woman is like, no, they're my grandkids. And she's like, you're grand. And she's like <laughs> going in and you could tell she's high. Like, I think she's high on heroin. Like, I'm not trying to be rude, oh, but she's deaf fucked up. Oh, no, I shouldn't laugh. Then. So um, the woman's like, 
she was saying all this stuff to her like the girl that I busted in on was like are you are you okay? I feel like you've had a life changing experience, like for the positive, like trying to pull all this stuff out. And then meanwhile, this woman's like, "Are you okay?" Because she could tell. How the hell? What I want to know is how there were that many people in that small bathroom. I don't know. I was uncomfortable. I literally was so uncomfortable that uh, the thing I was trying to roll, I ripped it in half because I was so anxious. And it wasn't a Tootsie Roll, I have y'all know. I literally was like, and then I was like, shit, all right, I'm out of here. I'm done. Got I can't. a jet. <laughs> and then. Uh, I know. And literally, I sat down at the booth. I turned to Jason and Kiko, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on in that bathroom, but I think Sarah's going through it. I sure was. And then you came back like two seconds later. You're like, that was an experience. It was, so, it was really, really crazy. And uh, this woman was still at work. Yeah. And then after that, we went to Bob and Barbara's, which is a bar in the city. And this dude. <laughs> Jason's oh so God. funny. So <laughs> it's four of us. It's my boyfriend, Jason, our friend Kiko, Sarah, and I. And Kiko and Sarah go to the bathroom. And while they're away, this drunk ass man comes up and he pulls a seat up. Well, no, 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 no. No, he sits in Kiko's seat. And we were like, um... Someone's sitting there. Yeah, and Jason goes, uh, actually, someone's uh, someone's sitting there. He didn't say anything. And he's like, oh, mind if I pull a seat up? And I was like, oh, no. What I said to him was I was trying to get him... He wanted to sit at a table, not the bar. I said, oh, there's a seat over there. <laughs> inferencing that, you know, get there's out. a whole table over there that's that open. That you sit uh, at. So he goes to the empty table, grabs the empty chair, and pulls it on over to our table. I'm like, fuck. So he's sitting there, and it's just, like, quiet and awkward. And, we're all like, uh, we're all just like looking drunk, at each other. I'm drunk and like Jason's sober, of course, because he just got done work, this poor child. And then the kid just like, he's like, so how's it going? And we're like, fine. We were not having it. And then it just got really awkward and quiet. And then Jason's like, can we have our table back? And the guy was like, <laughs> Uh, yeah. I was, I literally looked at Jason, like, shook, like, oh my God. He, like, shook our hands, didn't say anything to us. He just sat at our and table. Then literally walked away. And then he, walked And then away. disappeared. Yeah. Oh my God. And then he was wearing a blue shirt. And then there was nobody in the bar in a blue shirt. It was haunted. What if it was a ghost? Maybe he seemed like a ghost. And then my friend came over i we're gonna call her we're gonna call her hannah love that and hannah then um got paid to kick a guy in the balls those that are night. those are the type of people we love around us straight up like he was texting her and i was like oh my god that's so weird and then jason was like i'll drive you there and i'll be your safety net <coughs> and she, she got a hundred dollars to literally non-sexually kick a guy in the balls fully clothed that's my everyday life and i do it for free and then they talked about kafka and their favorite authors at 15 minutes 100 bucks just girly things just the girly things um yeah this is a quality podcast if you guys didn't know now you know <laughs> um but before we get started we would like to thank new amsterdam uh it's actually k-n-e-w amsterdam um, they sell pens and notebooks and pins, and they were kind enough to send us a notebook and some pens and some pins and fun stuff and a little note. Um, so I am constantly going through notebooks Same. straight up. And it's so funny. Jason is too, but his notebooks are like half the pages are upside down. The other half, like that's how the insides of my mind work. But I, I literally have like a table of contents in my notebook. I love that. You need it. <laughs> it's you not so need it. I don't have a journal. It's not like Dear Diary, but I write down a lot of podcasts, like things I come across that are weird or creepier that I want to do like a topic on or that when I lived with you, you bought me a notebook and I went through that thing I in sure seven did. months in I'm the whole notebook. Friend. You're very cute. But I, I need like... A, Two notebooks a year is usually good. That's unless really I'm having, great. Uh, yeah, unless I'm in like a creative roadblock. Um, but yeah, I go through notebooks like crazy. So this is pretty dope. It's nice quality. Uh, this is not sponsored or anything. They were just kind enough to send them. And um, I'm just shouting them out because it's it's a nice little really notebook. Is. I love and it. It's VQ. Yeah. And their whole thing is like, um, you know, bringing creative people together um, as a city for creatives. It's it's very nice. So check them out on the interwebs on Instagram. And you can go to newamsterdam.com. Again, that's new as in K-N-E-W, Amsterdam dot com v cool v sweet yes so our topic for today is uh disappearances baby ooh, ooh. 
Uh, and you are up first. I am. Do you want to take it away, Bay Bay? Sure do. In 1988, there was a strange disappearance in multiple alleged sightings of 20-year-old college student Elizabeth Campbell of Lampus, Texas. On April 25th, 1988, Campbell got into a huge fight with her boyfriend and she left his house in a hurry to head home on foot. Her home was about 30 miles away. Um, so along the way, a classmate passed by and gave her a ride, finally dropping off at a convenience store outside of the town of Cooperus Cove. Ooh. Campbell somewhat calmed down after their argument, and she called her boyfriend to ask him to get her and drive her the rest of the way, but he refused. She then hung up the phone, obviously pissed. Campbell did not return home that night, and authorities were unable to locate any leads or clues as to where she had gone, assuming that she was still angry about her fight and had just run away. Question, was she living with her boyfriend? No. Okay. Her so, her house was 30 miles away. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Which is really crazy that she stormed off and tried to walk home. Yeah, that's like more intense than P90X, baby. I'm saying, like, she was like, I'm Audi. If she, even if she could run 30 miles per hour, that would take... A day, mm, right? In, uh, all right, so if she lives 30 miles away... I, I just said it on the top of my head. If she lives 30 miles away and she's running at 30 miles per hour... I don't want to do math, Dad. It, it would take an hour. Oh. She's running 30 miles per hour. You said an hour. You said a day. Oh. Can you knock it off? Stop moving the furniture up there. We're trying to record a podcast. <laughs> what the frick? <laughs> That's Def the cat. Yeah, Def is. She's pissed because <laughs> we. T- I took away her treats and I'm giving them to Sarah. Well, she well Sarah's like cat, them. rather. Charlie, little boy. Um, Nearly a week later, there were two sightings of a woman that matched Campbell's description, both originating from another convenience store around 85 miles away, and witnesses reported that she had been with a man who was holding her arm and she looked scared. One witness stated, end quote, This car drove up to the fuel tank and a man got out of the car and took a young woman by the arm and brought her into the store with him, holding onto her arm. It wasn't as if it was a boyfriend or girlfriend type hold. It was his hand was above her wrist. I was up at the counter and he pushed a $20 bill out with one hand. This girl looked up at me and said, yes, can I help you? He said something to her in a language that I didn't understand and she dropped her head and looked down as if she was being punished for trying to say something. She just hid, put her face down, and that was the end of it. Wait, the wo- wait the the woman who was being possibly held hostage said, can I help you? Or this report, the person who reported this said, yes, can I help you? She said, yes, can I the help you? The reporting girl? Yeah. Oh, okay. So she must have been the cashier for the Yeah, my, okay, my assumption would be. Yet another sighting, sighting came in two months after this. In this case, around 150 miles away from another convenience store. Again the girl that's being described in all the sightings, uh, was described as being with an identified male who would not let go of her arm. It was then speculated that she had been abducted, but despite these leads, police could could not locate either Campbell or the man she was claimed to be with. And no one really knows if she's still alive. So what I think is interesting and questionable is why the man, if that is the situation, why would he bring her into the store? Did he not have a car? Right. I mean... He probably didn't want her to get away. That's true, but don't you think if he was going to go through all of this shit and he had... Maybe. Because there have been, like, recent things. I forget the name of the um, victim, but it was one girl. She was, like, missing for, like, years and years, and she ended up getting out. Right. But it was like they were... They just, like, hid her away, and that's probably what this man is doing. Yeah, but you don't bring them in public. I'm sorry, what year again? 1988. Yeah, you don't, like, cameras are around by then. He obviously did not care. He was like, psych, just kidding. I wonder if All these stories of mine have a pattern. I love a good pattern. I like the pattern on your shirt. No one wears Argyle anymore. (laughs) Did you just quote my script? I did. (laughs) I'm cute. You are cute. All right. Stop saying that about myself. That shit's, like, creepy and makes me uncomfortable. Um... I mean, like, it it makes a lot of sense for it to be her because it's literally the same ways around. And how else was she getting home? It could have been the fucking boyfriend. 
What if he was telling police that he refused to pick her up? Because that's the only place they could, the police were also, getting that part of the story. Also, I would feel guilty AF if I was her boyfriend. Right, I would too, but who's to say he didn't go pick her up, she went missing, and they never found him out. Oh, that's true. And this girl, it was either a different hostage or it wasn't a hostage to begin with, and it was just a girl. A weird relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. Or it could have been like a father-daughter thing. Right. Who's to say? Mm-mm. So, um, April 23rd, 1991, a 34-year-old California resident Gordon Collins was on vacation near Santa Rosalia in Baja, California, sir. I hate that they call it that. Like, what is that? What? Baja, California? Baja, California, sir. Why? It's S-U-R. Like the Vanderpump restaurant? Yeah. We should work there. Let's do it. I'm trying... Lisa Vanderpump, are you Hire listening? Me. Hire me. I'm hotter than Jack's. I'm a better actor than Stassi. Oh, or shit. Or actress. Oh. <laughs> well, there goes that. You said it. Can't take it back now. So he was on vacation with his girlfriend, um, Anastasia Seals, and some friends um, by the names of Wayne Schwartz and Arlene Burlington. On this day. <gasps> like the coat factory? Yeah, death. Her dad invented coats. Oh, my God. <laughs> So on this day, which is April 23rd, uh, the group went on a fishing trip in the Sea of Cortez in the early morning under perfectly calm weather, but a sudden storm came out of nowhere later that day and their 22-foot sailboat disappeared. How many people are on this boat? Four. Oh, no. So after an extensive, after an extensive search, the boat was finally found overturned and at the sea of the island of San Marcos. The bodies of Wayne Schwartz and Anastasia Seals were found bobbing around not far away. It didn't say if they were dead or alive. I'm guessing they were dead. If it was their bodies found? Right. 100%. Right, but... Girl, I don't think if they was alive, they would be... Bobbing. For apples, maybe. Not in the water. There was no sign of where the other two had gone, and no bodies were discovered despite the search of a hun- of 250 miles around the area by the United States um, Coast Guard. It was assumed that they have must have drowned as well. That is until September of that year when a series of strange reports started to come in from a Mexican village of Colonia. Is it the feet? No. Oh. Colonia Vincente Guerrero, around 300 miles from San Diego. Witnesses claimed that a disheveled, disoriented, and rather feral-looking American man had been seen for months lurking around the area and wandering around, begging for money and eating handouts given to him by locals. There was a... Su- su- I'm good? Yeah. There was a... Su- there was a suspicion that this could be the missing Gordon Collins. The man's family became convinced that this was the case and that he had possibly suffered amnesia during his accident. There were reports of two fishermen who claimed that they had seen an American man wearing only shorts and apparently injured climbing out of the boat. Out of the boat that capsized? Yeah. Um, And then he was last seen trying to board a bus. Oh, then a 100... What? Are you sure they saw him coming out of the boat or maybe out of the area? It's alleged. Oh. How many American men are probably on vacation? A lot. So these were not the only sightings of the mysterious man. He was seen again a short time after that on another nearby beach, wandering around aimlessly. When approached, he is said to have told the witness that he was waiting for some friends he had gone fishing with. When shown a picture of Gordon Collins, the witness said he was sure that this was the one he had seen and spoken with. Um, He was spotted again... Another 50 times in the area of La Paz Holy and shit. Cabo San Lucas. Before, Nobody took a Polaroid? Before finally being arrested for theft. After which the American translator who was brought in on the case swore that the man he spoke to was indeed Gordon Collins. The translator, a local American resident named James Hatfield, claims, this is a quote, There is no doubt in my mind it's Gordon because when we met him in jail I introduced him... I introduced myself to him, and he gave me his name, Gordy. And then when the flyer came out, on the flyer says Gordon, and you can't get the two pictures mixed up. It's the same. 
unfortunately, they're calling, they call him the man in this report because it's not, it's not really him. So they don't call him Gordon. They call him the man. How do they know it's not him? They don't. But they say um, the man was released and disappeared once again before anyone could question him. Despite the occasional sightings, he has never been located or proven to be Gordon Collins. Okay, I understand that the police couldn't hold him longer than they needed to, but couldn't they, like, not hold him against his... Well, I guess, fuck, if it what They can't. Couldn't they, like, try to help or, like, take a picture at least of him and been like... They had to have. If he was getting arrested and questioned and shit, he would have had to get, like... Mu- Actually, maybe not, because it wasn't in America. I don't know how it works down yonder, but... Right, also, nobody... I feel like because it's, like, a foreign country, it's it's not the same as here. Yeah, but nobody, like, I guess maybe people weren't concerned. But what happened to the other girl? She's just never found. That was, She disappeared. Creepy. Right. Just imagine that. Like, this man that everyone knows is someone just, like, Boop. going around. Well, yeah, I mean, he probably bonked his head. Right. After being like out of food and water for however long. Right. That's bound to go nuts. That's really crazy. That's why I don't fuck with the ocean. Mm mm. I don't need to go sailing. Why do I need to go sailing? I go on a pontoon every summer. One year, I swore to God that thing was going down. Stop. That's You can't say that. Well, That's because like there was a. A speedboat that went by really fast and my dad was driving the boat and you're supposed to like take the waves on the side because we had like I think we had two people more than we should have on there and two of the people Carly and Ricky were in foot casts so if we were going down they couldn't swim. I hate them both. Yeah and um we had a cooler that weighed more than a person it was like deaf it was like first off one of those metal ass coolers that are from like World War II. Was it like a Yeti? No it was like from the 70s oh, shit. Okay. maybe the 60s like a real ass vintage bitch but it's so heavy, heavy right and then it was filled with ice and beer and my dad well it wasn't my dad's fault the wave he was trying to turn and the wave hit the front of the boat and that shit went like under like it literally like the back of the boat started going up and i was like this is it <laughs> And my mom's bugging out and I'm bugging out. She would bug. I was sober. My mom's like, <laughs> like the scene from um from Bridesmaids. She's like, this is it. We're going down. I had a dream last night. You were there. <laughs> There's a woman churning butter on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought we were going to die. And um, I almost fell off a boat once. Like fell over. Fell overboard. Was mm-hmm. it a, a big boy boat? Yeah. Do you remember when you thought a, a, a <laughs> canoe was a yacht? No. You said it on this podcast. You, Ew, you am I okay? Straight up thought that a canoe is a yacht. Quite the difference. So if Sarah ever invites you to a yacht party, bring a fucking paddle. It's cause... a canoe, bitch. Listen, <laughs> I'm obsessed with boats. My mom yelled at me the other day because we're going um, to the beach. You do have a sailboat tattoo. <laughs> right. But it was not for that reason. But um, I was like, can we rent a boat? And she was like, what is your obsession with boats? I was like, shut up, mom. And I was like... Boats and hoes, mom. Boats, Boats and hoes. <laughs> Do you think it's weird that boat and float rhyme? Same with cramp and tamp. Boat float. Poopy dee scoop. Do. Do. Do you ever hear that song? Never. It's a Kanye song. Oh. Who? Kanye. you? Con me. Caillou? Great song. Everyone should check it out. Her pussy ball like Caillou. Swag, swag, I'm Caillou. I'm good. How, How are you? you? <laughs> Go way back like how you. Bad bitch gonna like, suck dick. Need 30 minutes like how you. Hey. If you would like to be featured on our next mixtape, go ahead and uh, email oddityspodcast at gmail.com. What's your second story? Third story, babe. We are on to uh, the story of Missy Murray. So this was in Ontario, Canada, May 31st, 1995, Misty went to her band practice as usual, but did not return that night. The odd thing about the story is that her friends claimed that there had been uh, no band practice that day, and they had no idea where she was at. Oh no, she was meeting with somebody. So, um, Misty was adopted and had recently expressed interest in finding her bi- biological mother. Police at first suspected that the girl had ran away obviously to find find mom mom. 
things took a turn for the worst when um, Missy's adoptive father, Stephen Murray, had been away on a boating trip at Lake Huron when his adoptive daughter had vanished, and suspicion fell on him in this case. Authorities became convinced that he was behind the vanishing, and he was accused of killing her and dumping her body in the lake. He. Um, there was no evidence of this, uh, and Misty's body was actually never found. There were numerous sightings of Misty that seemed to suggest that she was very much alive. There were instances where people she knew claimed that they had just come across her wandering about looking dazed and even spoke to her. In total, there was about 97 reported sightings of Misty all over Canada as far away as Toronto, with many of them being credible. Yet, despite this, Stephen Murray was put on trial for her murder. Um, there was lack of evidence, and he was soon acquitted. And friends and family uh, criticized authorities for using so much time and resources in pursuing Stephen as a suspect, even after evidence showed it was untrue. So the theory is she was kidnapped and forced into human slavery, but no one knows, and her case remains opened. I definitely need more info on that. That's weird. Dun, dun, dun. That's scary shit. Do you think she was trying to meet up with somebody? Maybe she wasn't going to go meet her mom. I mean, maybe. Uh, what's that one Lifetime movie? It's like the girl, and she tries to, um, she's like chatting with this guy, and she ends up meeting him at the mall, and her mom finds out. There was an episode of Degrassi about that, and it scared me shitless in middle school. Literally, like, why would you do that? That's so scary. I would never even, like, meet a person from the internet. Also, back in middle school, I don't know how people met. I mean, I don't, maybe it was just my experience, but I don't know how people met strangers in chat rooms. I only ever, like, talked to my friends in chat rooms. I And I talked to my friends so much that I I didn't even have time to, like, entertain a stranger that I didn't know. Really quick to add to your story, I just looked up a little piece now and it says Misty was planning on meeting the adoptive mother and that she left behind a packed suitcase and on her dresser was $200 and dozens of photos. Oh, so she was going to go meet her, but she never. But oh, if that if she did she go to meet her, her she behind. left everything behind. So it wasn't like she had everything packed and she maybe she went somewhere real quick and she got snatched then. Hmm, the timing does seem suspicious. Do you think it could be her dad? I don't know. I would have, like, my mind went to that maybe she either ran away with the dude or she ran away to go meet her mom. But now that I'm reading the facts that she had indeed packed a suitcase to pursue this and she had $200 and photos and shit, but she left them at home, makes me think... Because I was thinking maybe she was hitchhiking. She could have packed her bags and went hitchhiking on her way to go find mom, but she didn't bring anything with her. Right. So where was she going? Unless she, like, ran into trouble or something. I feel like she went out to probably get something real quick, and she was probably going to go back so she can leave. And But what was she getting? Maybe a bus ticket. I don't know. But if you were getting, you would just bring all your shit because you could just That's get true. hop she on. She could have went to a convenience store. Maybe. I don't get the band practice thing, though. She Hold lied. on. Was was that, is a band practice as in, like, marching band or, like, like a garage band? Garage band. Mm, I'm going to say, like, school You don't know? Band. Okay. Um, interesting. Well, that's curious. Well, then, I hope she didn't get sold into like I really hope sex not. trafficking or human slavery that's not cute no that's not fun for any party involved right uh no but I'd, i'm pretty sure we did not do that there was someone else something her last name was murray though oh i know who you mean uh something with a t no. and she um they have like no idea why the car was out there and she left her house mara murray us. Absolutely no tea in sight. It's fine. I'm good. I sleep. Well, she went missing uh, in February 2004. 2004. The tea might have been in the 2004. Oh, thanks. You're the best. 
Just trying to find how your brain works. It doesn't? <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. All right. So I have got uh, a story that um, the information that was out there was uh, not too solid. I did a lot of research on Reddit. Um, I did find credible sources, but I did. Uh, I got a lot of my theories and ideas from people who posted on Reddit. Um so, and I, I mean, I love Reddit, but when I'm trying to do this stuff, you don't know who the fuck's trolling right, it's out kind there. it's kind of not credible. So if I'm going on but Reddit. But it has, like, really good information. Yeah, or, like, web sleuths. Oh, but okay. then again, like, y'all don't know who's behind that keyboard. So I try to find credible, um, credible web websites for you guys because I just want to bring, like, the utmost quality. Uh, so this is the disappearance of Stephanie Stewart. So in August of 2006, 70-year-old Stephanie Stewart was in the midst of her 18th consecutive year of fire spotting in Alberta, Canada, near Hinton. So a fire spotter, uh, which I didn't know what it was. I had to look it up. Pretty much you're like in a cabin alone in the woods. By yourself? Yes. Okay. E. And in close proximity, uh, it's a job. It's someone's job. So this is like your job to do this. And um, in like close proximity to the cabin, sometimes attached to the cabin, is a tall like tower. Um, think of like a water tower kind of. And um, basically when you're the fire spotter on duty, what you do is you climb to the top of the tower and you have binoculars on like a camera and you pretty much just like look for smoke and fires and shit. Um, it's usually done during dry seasons in areas that commonly have, you know, brush or for forest fires. Um, so Stephanie's cabin was a bit secluded, but it wasn't like in the middle of fucking nowhere. It was a little bit more than three miles away from Highway 16 in Canada, which is a pretty main highway, but it wasn't like too deep in that bitch. But again, it was like a three mile, three miles out from from there. I would never go there alone. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it's some like soul searching shit, but no. <laughs> um, also, um, when you do it, it's pretty much for... Uh, like six months at a time. So you're living in this cabin, working, going to sleep, waking up, working. You know, you have your weekends off. Oh, shit. But you're pretty much... A regular much, nine to five. Yeah. Um, so her cabin had a little, like, dirt driveway where she parked her truck. Uh, so she did have a truck. Um, inside the cabin, there was a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom. It had a big um, deck that like ran the perimeter of the cabin and all that fun stuff. It uh, and it was two stories, so like um, oh, the cabin, fancy. yeah, the cabin was on like the second story, so it looked out over the the shit. Okay. And there was like, um, it's kind of hard to explain how it was because it was two stories. But the it was on like a hilly area, so there was a couple stairs that went down, and then you could just walk on the ground all the way down. And there was like a um, a grassy front yard, um, and it was like it wasn't an old cabin, but it wasn't quite newer, uh, and it looks like a log cabin, like it was like made out of logs and shit. <clears throat> but the doors were not that durable, like it had working locks and stuff. But if someone really Yikes. wanted. Yeah, if someone really wanted in that bitch, oh they, my god, mm, they could come on in. Not in the forest. Not in the forest. <laughs> so, um, her at her place in particular, her tower was located behind her. Um, you know, fire spotters have to wear special gear and stuff similar to like mountain climbing harnesses and straps you in and shit, and you literally like climb the outside of this water tower to get to the top. Um, however, like the it's not as archaic and shit as you would think. This is in two thousand six, but the tower at the top was like enclosed, so it was air conditioned and like oh, she had like a comfy seat to sit in for however long she was up there. She could knit, she could read with her binoculars um it's so it's not knock. it's not as like barbaric as it sounds stephanie was part of like a big fire spotter network right so it wasn't just her and she was like the only person in the area who was looking out on these fires and shit so um, how far would you say that the other person probably was they didn't say exactly but it was like a decent amount away right. and i will get back to that where like the next closest person oh, okay. was so um there were lots of other co-spotters who had their own cabins miles away again they didn't say like where exactly it was they were pretty much all doing the same thing hanging out peeping fires when Smokey the bear was sleeping you know the deal so um they were required every few hours of their day and into the evening to check in with a supervisor 
So inside the cabin, there was a landline telephone, and each spotter also had a walkie-talkie on them that allowed them to communicate with each other. Um, So she, like I said before, had been doing this for 18 consecutive years. Uh, She would live in the cabin from April until September, and then she would have the rest of the six months off. I don't quite know exactly what she did for the other six months, but she was 70 years old, so I assume she was retired from other working. So this was just what she did. Um, And at least 13 of those previous years were in this same exact cabin so she had been to other places 13 years in this cabin oh wow yeah so she was familiar with the area she knew the surrounding area she knew the protocol and all that shit and despite being 70 years old stephanie was very active uh she loved the outdoors she was very athletic and fit for her age and a year prior at the age of 69 she climbed mount kilimanjaro in africa 65 and here i am 25 69 oh 69 here i am 25 dying of just regular day-to-day life you have split ends also okay rude i do too so that's fine yeah that's what i was waiting for I love you. bitch <laughs> Um, I love you too. So, you know, that's impressive as balls that she could fucking climb Mount Kilimanjaro at I'm that saying. age. I'm saying. Well, she better be able to climb up them fucking stairs to get to that tower. It was a ladder. It wasn't even stairs. She had See? To be, mm-hmm. One foot in front of the other, baby. I would have fell the fuck off. <sighs> no, you wouldn't because they have harnesses. Don't worry. Oh. Um, don't you worry, sweaty. So besides that, I couldn't find too, too much else about Stephanie herself. She liked to read and garden. She had one daughter that was mentioned. Uh, They didn't mention a boyfriend. They didn't mention a living spouse or anything like that. Uh, She was five foot two and she weighed 105 pounds. Because I'm five foot two, want to dance with you. Sophisticated fun. And she's a seven year old sporty taquito in my my book. She's doing life right. Just wait. So the night of Friday, August 25th, Stephanie had talked with a family member. I assume it would be the daughter, but that's the only family member they mentioned. And uh, I I don't know. It was a family member. Um, It was said to be a normal conversation, nothing out of the ordinary. The following morning, August 26th, 2006, Stephanie failed to make her scheduled radio check-in before work that morning. Her supervisor sent out another fire spotter. The supervisor had called the house line a couple times when she didn't call, and um, we'll get back to that. So the supervisor then sent out a fire spotter who did a cabin, who was in like the cabin nearest to uh, check on Stephanie. So before entering the cabin, the fire spotter noticed that Stephanie's truck was still parked out front. So they were like, all right, maybe she's overslept. Maybe she's just taking a really long shower. or She didn't hear the, the phone call or anything. So when they knocked, nobody answered the door. So this person let themselves in. Um, Tell me what they found. Another thing I could not find in reports if the front door was locked or unlocked, which I find is probably very important. But I they, I couldn't find it anywhere if the I front mean, door was locked or unlocked. Maybe she had keys because like they're all the same. That's what I would assume if it was locked. Mm-hmm. But but I think it's really important to know it if when that person got there, if that front door was unlocked, that's oh, right. going to be a big you right. know. Anyway, so um, well, I guess maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it. When the spotter entered Stephanie's cabin, they found an unsettling scene. Yikes. A pot of water had been left boiling on the stove. Some items were missing from the cabin. Two pillowcases with blue covers, a burgundy sheet, a Navajo patterned duvet, and a gold watch. The person also found the phone had been unplugged and there was an undisclosed amount of blood inside the cabin. So... The fellow spotter reported back to the supervisor and a massive search began. So additionally, there had been multiple phone calls made to the cabin from the supervisor uh, that were picked up but immediately hung up. So nobody said anything on the other line. The person would pick up when it rang and then just hang up. Why would you do that? Just don't answer. And Don't know how to be weirdos. And though the amount of blood is not mentioned in any public reports, it is assumed that, you know, it was most likely a massive amount of blood because the police almost immediately ruled it a homicide. Yikes. So they walked in here and they said someone's been murdered. So in a very small number of cases do police declare murder without a body present unless there is an extreme amount of blood that matches the person's DNA, thus assuming the victim would not survive the evident amount of blood loss. So 
everywhere it says there's an undisclosed amount of blood, but I don't think it was just a couple drip drops on no, the fucking Jeff floor. Was... Especially if they're going to be like someone was murdered here. Right. So forensic evidence and other information gathered during the early days of the investigation uh, led officers to rule out an animal attack. They also ruled out an accidental death and a medical episode that would cause her to wander away. They concluded she was killed by somebody. So the search amounted to nothing. No foreign tire marks were found in the dirt driveway and nobody else's DNA was reported to have been found inside the cabin. To this day, Stephanie Stewart's body has never been found and her murder remains unsolved. So clearly the police, since this is unsolved and it's not a cold case, it's still an open case Yikes. in Canada. There's certain things they can't release to the public, but that's what makes it not I don't want to say interesting because it, it is very interesting, but that sounds disrespectful. But what's so like alluring is the fact that they're, I would have thought maybe, maybe it was a fucking bear, you right. know, but they, they're not saying why, but they say, oh no, we can say it was not a bear. Well, because her sheets are missing. So that's, the yeah, that's true that too. Probably wrapped that's up and true then too. taken out. So let's. Yeah, that's a good segue. Let's talk about the stuff that was missing from her cabin. So the missing pillows with the pillowcases on it, the bed sheets, and the duvet. So one theory, um, I was meandering around on, on Reddit. Uh, so one theory is that Stephanie had someone over the night before. They could have engaged in sexual activity either with Stephanie's consent or, God forbid, without it. Uh, then the person knew their DNA was all over the bed they slept in, so they took the pillowcase, the sheets, and the blankets with them. Um, for some reason, they murdered I think Stephanie. They her up in it. So maybe the person used, yeah, maybe the person used the sheets and the blanket to wrap up Stephanie's body after she was murdered, so it would stop the blood from trailing. Because that was another thing was oh, they right. they didn't really say there was there was a lot of blood in there, but there was no blood trailing outside. Right. Um. So, yeah, I, I, that, you know, it could, but the fact that the pillowcase, the pillows with the pillowcases were taken too. So the pillows and the pillowcases were taken. The pillows, the pillowcases, a duvet cover, um, a blanket that that's like the bedding that was taken. So I'm thinking, you know, it, the pillows is what really raises the eyebrow to me. That's like, just like maybe somebody spent the night or maybe somebody laid in that bed because if they were just using it to they just took the blankets. Yeah, they just would have took the blankets, but the pillows were missing also. Oh my god. Yeah. Well maybe the pillows were used to kind of like soak up the blood. Could yeah, could have. That's like, a good point. Um so there wasn't any like trailing. It, yeah, it could have. I don't know how, like, how, like, how yeah. that would work. Yeah, I, I don't like know either, would, but. Like, absor absorb something. Yeah. Um, she could have, I hate to say it, but maybe been smothered with the pillow. That's true. And then, like, maybe, I hate to say it, they been hacked it. into pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And then the pieces were put into the blanket. And, the and that's why it was so, like, bloody and fucked up. Um, okay. So that's, uh, some things that were missing. Some, another thing that was missing was Stephanie's gold watch. Now I thought that this was kind of interesting that they mentioned this. Um, one theory I came up with was that maybe she was wearing it, you know, maybe where, whatever happened to her body, it could still be on her right, wrist. That's true. Um, they just happened to mention that it was stolen. Maybe it wasn't stolen. Another thing it could have been, this is really far-fetched in my opinion, but again, I came up with this because it's kind of stupid, but like maybe it was like a red herring. Maybe like the person had it out for her, killed her, and tried to make it look like a robbery gone wrong, but like they jacked one fucking golden watch. What else is going to be in that house? Literally nothing. She had like food. I think the it first wasn't even thing her you belongings. said makes a lot of sense. She was probably wearing it because she was she getting could, ready for work. She could have. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe, we don't know. Right. Uh, we don't quite know the timeline now or maybe she just got home yeah from whatever she was doing um so let's talk about that boiling water um i think this is one of the most interesting pieces because the water wasn't evaporated which means it just happened that the person the fellow spotter who came over to check on her was in between 40 to 60 minutes, like, after the perpetrator That's why I think the watch is still on left. her. 
I don't think the this has nothing to do with the watch. I don't know. I'm saying she was probably getting ready for work. And she had the watch on. Okay. Possibly. Possibly. Let's drop the watch for a second. So, um, so either Stephanie was alive a short amount of time before the person came over, which I don't think is the case, or the murderer put the pot of water on. So, um, okay, let's just talk about one theory is that Stephanie could have been, she could have like received a visitor that morning, just moments before the phone calls. Um, and maybe she was preparing breakfast or making tea. It was a pot of water. Um, so Stephanie may have known the person or it may have been a random person. Yikes. These theories are super vague. I'm just really trying to piece together what they're, really they're giving are. us. So I feel like they're it's vague for the case also. Yeah. Um, another theory is that, um, again, a person had spent the night there. Uh, Stephanie may have wanted their company or not. They could have murdered Stephanie that morning and then that murderer could have been making breakfast or tea. Then the phone calls scared off the perpetrator. Um Either way, the fire spotter arrived on spot that morning, not that far behind the perpetrator. In right. my opinion, I think that somebody had to have fucking been in that house if there was still right, boiling like water. Early on. I have for I have gotten um, under the influence and forgot that I was boiling a pot of water, and it has like totally evaporated. And I was like, "Oh fuck, my bad." Right. Um, another theory is that the perpetrator could have murdered Stephanie. And wanted to set the cabin on fire. Uh. So they used the water to give themselves some time to get an alibi. So they wanted to start a fire with the stovetop, which I think is a really shitty plan. Right. But this is just a theory. And maybe they were like, okay, if I put water on here, it's going to give me about an hour to drive somewhere to be seen in public. So I have an alibi that when this fire started, it was basically like a fucking poor slash stupid man's incendiary device. Right. Maybe just maybe the person was like murdering her because if there was a shit ton of blood in the house they clearly didn't give a fuck if anybody found it so they may have planned on burning it down that's true but also why didn't they they may have expected it too oh they may have thought that yeah that once the water boiled they didn't expect the other person to come check on on them um so i have a couple other theories here for ye um so the location of the cabin like i said uh before was close to highway 16 so reddit user homer 1969 who is closely acquainted with stephanie's supervisor that was involved in the case shout out to homer 1969 so this reddit user discussed in a thread the heavy um drug usage in 2006 in the area specifically the use of meth um and dealing meth it was running rampant in the area so on highway 16 like some people went missing yeah Yeah. um so perhaps she witnessed something from her tower that like someone who was on meth was like was committing a crime or something it could have also been she woke up she was making breakfast boiling her water someone knocks on the door and it's somebody uh, maybe on meth maybe on a different drug maybe just a homeless person not on drugs who was looking for shelter let them in was like hey i'm putting on some tea you look tired let me help you out with the tea or hey you look tired why don't you go lay down on the bed where i have two pillows a pillowcase a duvet cover and a gold watch help yourself um you know maybe if the person was on drugs and they were they saw the tower because the tower overlooks a huge amount of the city they were right. just like in their state of mind was like whoever's up there saw me commit this crime when in and reality like, she didn't berserk. so they were like i need to find that person and i need to take them out because i just stole something from this person or i just murdered this other person or i just kidnapped this other person on highway 16 right. and i need to go find who's up in that tower and i need to pop a clock or something like that um well, I shouldn't say Papa Glock because there was no weapon found. There was no bullet holes found. So, th- um, you know, maybe she witnessed something. Wh- who knows? Um, and then thanks to the pleb master on Reddit, shout out to the pleb master was good. Uh, they briefly discussed another theory. So in 2016, there was this man named Travis Vader who was found guilty of and charged with the second-degree murder of 80-year-old Lyle and 79-year-old Marie McCann. Their murders occurred in 2010. 
But then in 2016, the second degree murder was um, was reduced and he pretty much got convinced of manslaughter. Um, but what does this have to do with Stephanie Stewart's disappearance four years prior? Well, it was reported and proved that he was in the area in 2006. His, uh, his sister... And his brother kind of said some sketchy shit about him and what he was doing in the area in that time. <coughs> and another thing was that Lyle and Marie McCann's bodies were never found. Ooh, pattern. So, uh, and that case was kind of confusing. I looked into that and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But um, if anything good came out of this, uh, the safety has increased for these people who are fire spotters, oh, well, you know, there's yeah, fences, fucking locks. barbed wire, locks and keys. Um, and now on their radios, they carry around um, GPS trackers and stuff. And you do have the choice to like team up and you can have someone else live in the cabin I feel like with it you. It should literally be like that. Yeah, I, I could not do that. I really, I couldn't do that. Like, did you, you saw I Spit on Your Grave, right? Where the girl's out there, um, she's trying to write a book. Yeah, like, I don't know why, it's like, okay, living alone is fine, but in a secluded area is not okay. No, thanks. I'm good. I would tweak, I would tweak myself out. Nothing even has to happen, but I'll convince myself that something that will happened. or it did. And it just, you know. I don't need that. No one's comfortable in that situation. I like my alone time, but I like my alone time like in a house full of people. Knowing that. Where I can like go and like sit on the toilet and just like. Be like someone's here, but it's fine because I'm just alone. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping a deuce. What it is. Um, so that is Stephanie Stewart. And I think that's so sad. As crazy and intriguing as it is, this is a 70-year-old woman trying to who, live her life yeah she was healthy she was live she was thriving she really was from what i could read I she feel was like happy she saw something another thing is um possibly a family member we don't know what happened on the phone with that family member right no other family member you know the i just paying attention to the things that the police were withholding the information i mean i don't want to go throw in shade because clearly there's no information there but like why are you withholding this information like what there's something right, weird like, going on what's good she could have had a lover could have got it twisted could have known where she was right you know? um i read some somewhere else that there was a lot of um people in the area that she wasn't too fond of and that weren't too fond of her mm -hmm. yeah but, but there weren't 13 years yeah but there weren't great details on that about like why she would be beefing with somebody out in right. the woods who it's just kind of uncomfortable and she wasn't on drugs right who's to say that's true because i had another theory that like Maybe something happened with the exchange she had, and then that's Oh, you why. thought she was, like, buying drugs? Yeah, or, like, something happened. Perhaps. The, I mean, I feel like we can't rule anything out because we don't true. know. Anything. Yeah. I just think that the pot of boiling water is so fucking creepy to me. Because imagine being that person who opens the door, there's, like, blood everywhere, and a, a pot, pot of, of boiling water, water right. and nobody in the house. Right. Like, something recently, right. someone recently was in there. And what if they're still there? Exactly. Well, they weren't. But they, they like, the fact that they couldn't find other DNA in the house. And the fact that they literally had no other leads to anything. Nothing. And like, this was 2006. Nothing's come out since. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it is particular that that um, Travis Vetter dude was uh, in the area and he was the accused of manslaughter for older people right. in the area. Shout and out to the pleb master. Was there any... Um like leads to that like why he killed them so i i kind of got lost in that and i didn't want to i should have fucking went back and no, like studied okay. it a little bit more but i don't know it had something to do with their rv they traveled in an rv and they had a car and he like burnt their rv went missing or something and he burned down their rv and he said something to the brother that the brother ended up telling police that nobody would know and he like he had stolen their car and like they found the the missing people's car um 
Damn, he's just ransacking this pe- these people. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he did this, so I can't really say, but he was charged with manslaughter for those two people whose bodies were never found. What does RV even stand for? Uh, recreational vagina. I thought I thought it was um, it's recreational vehicle. No, no, it's recreational vagina. Oh. Don't get it twisted. I won't. No. I don't think I could ever drive an RV. No. I can never live in one either. They're too small. I'll die. My friend has an RV and they drive it to Florida every year. Can you imagine driving like what is that nine hours from here? Maybe ten no, hours. It's more. Probably in a fucking RV. I guess once you're on the straightaways, it's fine. But you got me cutting corners, no bitch. Right. This shit gonna fucking fall I'm not over. Cut out for that. I can't drive that goddamn fucking stick of butter down the street. It is a fucking stick of butter. It's massive. There's had like a little chandelier in it too. Bougie. V cute. So. Do you have a fun fact? I do. Bumblebees leave scented footprints on every flower they visit to inform other pollinators the flower has just been recently tapped. Aww. It's cute, but also it's like, yo, I was masturbating on this flower. Just give it a minute. Right. I already fucked the shit out of this flower. Ew. Is that what they do? Pollinate? Yeah. Bees help, right? Bees help um, flowers have sex because they pollinate. They take the pollen and they spread it to the other thing. And that's how flowers spread, right? I've never heard I don't that. know. I think I saw it on the Magic School Bus. Miss Frizzle was a crazy bitch. Right. I love her. Who even knows that she's credible? She is credible. Incredible. Girl, that's a booty hole. The Sun City Palms is a cheerleading squad in Arizona that only people 55 or older can join. I knew that. And you want to know why I knew that? Because <gasps> on YouTube, it's called Barcroft TV. I highly recollect. I love that. What was I about to say? I highly recommend. We're recollect. Tired. It's fine. Who's this? Going. Push. Push. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Ew, that sounds like the um fucking American Horror Story themes like song. Why do I have a picture of Danny DeVito naked on my phone? That is really scary. He looks like a fucking sloth. Danny DeVito, don't talk to me, bitch. Okay, that I don't know why, but that gave me a really creepy negative feeling. Please don't ever show me that picture again. Of <laughs> Danny DeVito naked. Yeah, it looks like I don't know. Um, my tweet of the week is Twit. Okay, so it says me. Can I get a Coke? I hob waiter. Is Pepsi okay? Yes. <laughs> For those that was of you, so bunny. Oh my God! Stop! I see what you did there. For those of you listening to this in the future, when this is totally not going to be relevant, as we are recording this, I hop turned into I hob International House of Buttholes. I love that. And that's all the information I got for you. So um, mine is a little. Uh... Oh, I forgot to credit that person too. That was a hilarious joke, and they deserve the credit. Um, you accept the credit you think you deserve. Um, this is at Barknado69. Love that. Shout out to you. Um, this one's a little... Uh, Controversial? Yes. Love a good controversy. So at Josh X David says, So the passage in the Bible that says, Man shall not lay with man, which al- originally written in <laughs> Greek. What it actually said was, Man shall not lay with boy. But it got lost in translation, and it was referring to pedophiles, not homosexuality. Uh, okay. One, we cannot, neither of us are claiming that that is credible. But two, I also read a tweet that was like, <laughs> it said the people in the Bible said that if man lay with man, they have to be high as shit because they're going <laughs> to, a man who lays with a man is going to be stoned. I thought oh, it was funny. Oh, that's funny. I hope I don't offend anyone. Just trying to. Shed some skin. Shed light, you know, brighten up people's minds. Brighten it and tighten it like a butthole. Today's episode has been sponsored by, by buttholes. Butthole Bleach. Ew. Check out your BB at IHOP. What if it's like interna- IHOP. Inter- International House of Butthole Bleach? Ew. We did talk about bleaching our asses. We didn't did, because I, I didn't know. I thought it was. I thought people. People. I thought. People bleach the hair to not see it. I think it, it bleaches the skin too. I think it bleaches the hair, but I think it it's like a powerful serum. Yeah. And also some don't pe- use Clorox. Some people have like um, darker buttholes. And that's okay. We love all buttholes. Yeah. No homo. 
all the homo. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for listening to if, us rant about absolutely nothing and, and great everything. stories. Uh, if you would like to support us, head on over to patreon.com slash esoteric oddities. Thank you to our current supporters, y'all the shit that make us not want to quit. Yes, uh, indeedy. If you're not already following us on Instagram, what are you doing? Instagram. In- www.instagram.com slash esoteric oddities. Uh, follow us on Twitter esoteric oddity o-d-d-i-c-i-e send us an email at oddityspodcast at gmail.com if you have anything to say to us you can say it to my motherfucking face or hit me up on motherfucking myspace this yo girl lil j you remember that show little showstopper i think i do the little girl oh my god please somebody out there be nodding and being like i I remember her yeah that makes me feel not so alone thank you thanks (laughs) bye on out on out Yeah, I don't know. I'm losing it. Bye. Bye.